Hello and welcome to DevWave Diaries. If you're ready to level up your web design skills, you've come to the perfect place. Recently, I came across this incredible award-winning landing page, and in today's video, I'll be showing you how to create this first page from scratch. First, let me show you the page that I have created. This is the final result, and by the end of this video, you'll learn how to build a page like this yourself. If you like this page, then don't forget to like and comment on the video. So without waiting, let's get started with the video. Let's start by creating a div with the class name page1. Inside this div, add a video tag with the id bg video. Set the src attribute to the location of the grass video. I'll be providing all the necessary images and videos through a GitHub link, which you'll find in the description of this video. After that, add the attributes autoplay, loop, muted, and plays inline inside the video tag. This ensures the video plays automatically, loops continuously, remains muted, and works seamlessly across all devices. Now, let's create a nav tag. Inside it, add a div with the class name logo, and within this div, insert an image tag. Set its src attribute to the logo image location. After that, create another div with the class name navigation, and inside it, write the text about. Next, create a div with the class name main. Inside it, add four divs with the class name box. You can write them manually or use the shortcut method I showed earlier to generate them quickly. After that, add the text I showed inside the first three box divs. This is all the HTML code that we need for this animation. Now, let's move on to CSS. In this CSS file, I have already added some code, including the CSS boilerplate. This includes setting margin to zero, padding to zero, box sizing to border box, and font family to sans serif. After that, I also added some styles for the HTML and body. The width is set to 100%, the height to 100%, the background color to black, and the text color to white. Now, let's add some styles to the page one div. Set its width to 100% so that it takes up the full width of the screen. Set the height to 100 viewport height to ensure it covers the entire visible area of the browser window. Next, let's add some styles to the video tag inside the page 1 div. Set its position to absolute, top to zero, and left to zero so that it stays fixed at the top left corner. Set its width to 100% and height to 100 viewport height to make it cover the entire screen. Use object fit cover to ensure the video scales properly without distortion, and set Z index to zero to keep it in the background. Now, open the browser, and you will see that the video covers the entire background while all the other texts go below this video. Now, let's style the nav tag. First, set its width to 100% so that it stretches across the entire screen. Then, set the height to 4 REM to give it a proper navbar size. Make its position relative so that it stays in place while allowing child elements to be positioned inside it. Set the display to flex, which helps in aligning elements easily. Use justify content space between to place the logo on one side and the navigation on the other. Align item center will ensure everything stays vertically aligned. Add padding of 06 REM 06. REM to create some spacing on the left and right. Set overflow to hidden to prevent any unwanted overflow, and finally, set Z index to 1 to keep the navbar above the background video. Open the browser, and you will see that the navbar is now visible and positioned on top of the video. Next, let's style the image inside the logo div. Set its width to 20 REM to give it a proper size. After that, style the navigation div by setting its font size to 1.3 REM to make the text slightly larger and font weight to 600 to make it bold. Now, let's style the main div. Set its position to relative and width to 100% so that it spans the full width of the screen. 
For the height, use the calc function to set it as calc, 100 vh minus 4 rem, since we have already set the navbar height to 4 rem. This ensures that the main div takes up the remaining screen space below the navbar. Open the browser and then open the inspect window. If you hover over the main div, you will see that it takes up the remaining height of the browser because we set its height to 100 vh minus 4 rem. Next, let's style all the box divs inside the main div. Set their position to relative and width to 100% so that they take up the full width of the main div. For the height, use the calc function and set it to 100 vh minus 4 rem by 4. This ensures that all four box divs have equal height inside the main div, evenly distributing the available space. After that, set border top to 1 pixel solid hash ACABAB. This will create a thin line at the top of each box div. After adding this line, copy and paste it using Alt plus Shift plus down arrow key, then change border top to border bottom. This will add a border at the bottom as well, creating a separated effect for each box div. Now, add display flex to align the content properly. Set justify content start to align the content to the left and align items end to position it at the bottom. Finally, set font size to 8 rem to make the text inside the box divs large and prominent. Open the browser, and you will see that the text size is now properly set. After that, add line height of 6 rem to adjust the spacing between lines, padding left of 6 rem to create some space from the left, overflow hidden to prevent any content from overflowing, and z index 1 to ensure it stays above the background. Next, let's create a before pseudo element for the box div. Inside it, set content to an empty string to make it functional. Set its position to absolute, with top and left at zero, so it covers the entire box. Set its width and height to 100% to fully overlay the box div. Use background hash a47864 to give it a specific color, and set z index to minus one to place it behind the main content of the box div. Now, open the browser, and you will see that all the box divs are filled with the before pseudo element, covering them with the background color. Next, open the inspect window, then select any of the box divs. After that, select the before pseudo element from the CSS panel. Now, find the top E0 style, click on it, and use the up arrow key on your keyboard to gradually increase the top value. You will notice that the pseudo element moves downward, and when the top value reaches 100%, it completely hides. Now, change the top value to 100% to hide the before pseudo element completely. Here, you can see that there is no space between year and 2025. First, let's add this gap to make the text more readable. Select the span element inside the box div, then add margin left. 8 rem to create a gap between year and 2025. Next, let's create an animation named animate with a duration of 8 second, using a linear timing function for a smooth transition, and set it to infinite so that it keeps running continuously. Apply this animation to the before pseudo element. Now, let's create the animate animation using keyframes. At 0% and 20%, set the top value to 100% so that the pseudo element remains hidden at the start. Then, at 30%, change the top value to 0% to make it fully visible. At 40% and 50%, keep the top at 0% so that it stays in place for a while before the next phase of the animation begins. This will complete the first half of the animation, where the pseudo element moves from being hidden to fully visible and remains visible for some time. Now, for the next half of the animation, first, create a keyframe at 70% and set the top value to 0%. Here, we use 70% because the first keyframe we created was at 20%. Since the animation consists of two halves, we need to maintain the same interval. To do that, we add 50 to the previous keyframe value. After that, create a keyframe at 80% and set the top value to minus 100%.
This will move the pseudo element completely out of view in the upward direction. Then, create keyframes at 90% and 100% and set the top value to minus 100% again, ensuring that the pseudo element remains hidden for the rest of the animation cycle before restarting. Now, as you can see, the animation works perfectly. First, the pseudo element moves upward into view, then it stays there for a moment before continuing its movement and exiting out of the boundary. We also need to apply this animation to the navbar of the website. Since we have already set the navbar's position to relative, we just need to add the same before pseudo element that we used for all the box divs. This will ensure that the navbar gets the same animated background effect as the box divs. Now, it looks perfectly similar to the original website. The only thing left is to replace the background video with this CSS animation, making it fully dynamic animated design. This is all the CSS code we need to achieve the animation effect. Now, let's move on to JavaScript to implement the dynamic video change functionality. First, create a variable named bgvideo and assign it the value document.querySelector. After that, inside it write, hash bgvideo. This will select the previously created video tag, which has the ID of bgvideo. After that, create another variable named box and assign it the value document.querySelector. Now, inside it write dot box. This will select the first div with the class name box, allowing us to target it for further manipulation. Next, create a variable named video links and assign it an array of strings. Inside this array, add the relative paths of all the videos you have. To do this, go to the video location in your VS code, right click on a video, select copy relative path, and paste it inside the array. This will store all the video file paths, making it easy to access them dynamically. Now, update the relative video links as I shown. First change the slash from relative video links. Then add dot slash in front of both links, making sure they are correctly referenced relative to the current directory where the script is running. Next, create a variable named current index and set its initial value to zero. After that, create a function named change video. Inside this function, update the current index by setting it to current index plus one modulus video links dot length. This will ensure that the index cycles through the available video links, preventing it from going out of bounds. Next, write bgvideo.src equals video links, current index. This will update the src attribute of the HTML video tag to the new video link from the video links array. After that, write bgvideo.load, which will reload the video element and apply the updated source, ensuring the new video starts playing properly. Now, create another function named checkBeforeElement. Inside this function, define a variable named beforeStyle. Now, assign it the value of getComputedStyle. Then inside it write box and before. This will allow you to retrieve the computed styles of the before pseudo element inside the selected box div. After that, create a variable named top value and assign it the value of before style dot get property value. Then inside it write top. This will retrieve the current value of the top property from the computed styles of the before pseudo element. Next, write console.log top value to log and check the changes of the top value for the before pseudo element. Open the browser and then open the inspect tab. After selecting the console window, you'll notice that the top value will print, but it empty. I think we missed something. We forgot to call the check before element function. To fix this, use set interval and inside it, write check before element with the interval set to 2000 milliseconds. This will ensure that the function runs every two seconds. Now, you'll see the top value printed in the console tab. As the animation of the before element progresses, you'll notice that the top value changes. When the box divs before element completes its upward movement, the top value will become zero pixel, indicating that the animation has fully completed and the element has returned to its initial position. Now, after the console.log line, create a if statement line and inside it write if top value become zero pixel or top value become minus 158.2 pixel then call the change video function. 
So, every time the entire animation of the before pseudo element completes, and the top value becomes either 0 pixel or minus 158.2 pixel, the change video function will be triggered. This ensures that the background video is changed after each cycle of the animation is finished. The video did not change after the before elements animation. It seems like there is an issue. Let me take a moment to check and find the error. Oh, I think I declared the current index using const instead of let. Now, change the variable declaration from const to let. Then, open the browser, you will see, the video changes with the CSS animation. Now we have successfully created an amazing, award-winning website landing page. And that's all for today's video. If you want more videos like this, just drop a comment and let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay updated with all our latest content. Your support helps us create more exciting and valuable videos. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode of DevWave Diaries.